Good morning. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome, uh, Janet, to come on board. Welcome, everybody. I'm really excited today. First of all, TGIF. Woo! We've made it through another week of social isolation and uh, staying at home. And I'm really proud of each and every one of you. So I want to give you each a little applause for doing the right thing and keeping you and your families healthy. And today I'm really excited. I decided that on Fridays, I'm going to share some good news. Um, and I actually have some really, really exciting, some good news for um, all of you who want extra good news. And then also today we're going to talk about children's antivirals and immune boosters. This has been a question of a lot of you viewers. So a lot of parents who are watching now or on the replay or anybody who has grandkids or caregivers um, or have any littles in your lives that you love and want to keep safe and supported. I've brought a little arsenal of items here that are in my little uh, toolbox of health and wellness for Gabriel. And so welcome everybody. Any questions you have, just comment down below. And so I'm excited. So first of all, let me just give you a quick little rundown of our show today. It's a live show, just like every uh, morning at 9 a.m. We start off with some news. We have some uh, conversations. It's very interactive and engaging. For all of you new viewers, welcome. I'm Dr. Melissa Gallagher, and I am a naturopathic physician, and I'm a mom. So this is very, this topic today with children's health is very close to my heart. I have a little four and a half year old named Gabriel. He was actually right upstairs doing his uh, start to school. He's homeschooling just like all of our other kiddos. And um, I also, as a naturopath, I focus on addressing the root cause of illness and disease. And that's really my core focus when I work with my patients and folks in my clinical setting, which is uh, in a suburb just north of Atlanta called Sandy Springs. Uh, and now I'm juggling at home work. So I, we closed down the practice. We're not seeing any patients, um, regardless of medical necessity. I think it's just safer for all of us to just go into our home settings and be safe. So welcome to all of you. I'd love for you to know, I'd love to know where you're tuning in from. So first I'm going to call for some engagement, comment down below and let me know what city, state or country you are viewing this live or the replay. Uh, where are you located? So I'm super excited to have uh, this conversation with all of you. And I see we have Farida from Pakistan. Hi, Farida and Pat. Pat's our wonderful moderator on YouTube. And I'm grateful for all your help, Pat. Uh, Jenny's in New York and Mo and Will, Georgia. Yay. Fellow Georgians and Jana's upstate South Carolina. We've got Tennessee and Buffalo and Michigan, Oklahoma. Kim's in Le Lexington, New Jersey. Love it. We've got a lot of folks from all over McAllen, Texas, and California. Oh, Naomi, you're up really early. So I'm honored to each and every one of you join me and many of you join me every morning. And so I'm, I'm grateful. I'm honored to be a part of your morning, morning cup of tea, coffee, smoothie. I have to be drinking my keto coffee this morning. And, um, so I have to admit that, um, I'm feeling a little unmotivated. We are going now on officially. This is the this we've completed three weeks in this kind of phase. Uh, three weeks ago, Gabriel, I was actually I was at an appointment at this time trying on. It was a final fitting uh, appointment for my wedding dress, and I actually had like a second outfit. <sighs> and um, we are I was getting fitted, and then I got a call from his school nurse that he uh, he was complaining about fluid in his ears. And so I went and grabbed him at like 940. And that was the last time my child's been at school. <laughs> actually, I think that was actually four weeks ago. So that was on the uh, 6th, the 13th, the 6th. No, it was actually the 6th of um, February or the 6th of March. Uh, and then we had him. He was out of school for spring break. And then during spring break was when uh, Georgia was hit with the first cases of coronavirus in the school system. And, and, you know, all hell has broken loose. So anyway, we have now we're I, this is actually four weeks. But since we have been hunkered down and haven't been to stores and outside the home for any requirements, we're <sighs> a threesome here of, uh, you know, Brian, Gabriel and I trying to figure out how to manage life. And uh, we found out the other day 
that um, school will be out for the rest of the season for all of us here in Georgia. So um, I'm, I think this is a very timely topic because a lot of you parents, I know like my concern as a parent is to minimize uh, our exposure. And right now we are not going to be setting foot in any doctor's offices for myself, Brian or Gabriel, unless it's absolutely required. And so this catalog of resources can really help you minimize and 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 limit like the earaches, ear infections that we had, you know, previously the colds and flus, and even you know viral infections that um, are milder. We know cases with kids they tend to be on the milder side, but that doesn't mean it's it they're excluded from from the viral infection that is going around. And so I wanted to really equip each and every one of the parents watching. Um, and for all of you who engage with kids or have grandkids, um, these are resources for parents to use anytime uh, throughout, you know, all of the times uh, apart from this current time. So, uh, so that's what we're, where we're at. Um, I do want to first make a few quick little announcements. Um, obviously, we know our numbers are, are on the incline. So we're at 244. 1,159 cases here in the U.S. It's quite substantial. New York will hit 100,000 today, uh, which is just mind-blowing. Um, troubling, more so troubling, is that Louisiana has, per the cases, have had the most deaths. So they have uh, 9,100 cases, and they've had 310 deaths. So I send a lot of healing energy and prayers uh, to all of our friends. We have a lot of viewers. I spent time in New Orleans uh, about a year ago, actually, and met with people and did uh, a, a virtual or an in-person meet and greet. So I think about all of those individuals in New Orleans and in that area. Um, and then also uh, face masks. So, you know, I've been talking about this this week, basically since I caught wind that um, one, there's research that shows the travel uh, space, you know, the distance that these droplets go can be 23 to 27 feet. Um, that was pushed forward to the CDC and the World Health Organization. And the CDC is, uh, they're going to be changing their guidelines. It, there's a lot of kind of political bureau, bureaucratic tape. It sounds like they're trying to work through. I think there's an imaging of like all of us wearing masks that is troubling. Um, but the reality is that if you haven't ordered a mask, please consider doing so. There are wonderful videos if you want to you make them on your own if you have materials at home. Um, I have posted on um, Instagram or on, on YouTube here. I've got um, actually I forgot to do that, but I will make sure that I list um, the um, the link. So I've I've been in contact with a lot of Etsy stores, and those are the people that I've ordered a lot of the masks for. They're making them as high quality as they can. They've got filter inserts. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and add that now, um, as well as one of our patients back at home in St. Pete, she uh, lost her job. She happens, hobby, her side hobby is sewing. She and her mom both have sewed Gabriel some amazing things for our house and our home. And um, I'm going to put that link over here now for you guys on um, YouTube, but there are Etsy stores that are making really great quality, um, I'm posting it right now, um, high quality, wonderful masks. Now, these are not medical grade. I want to be clear. They're not in 95s. Those are pretty much unavailable. And if you do have access to them, I'd question it. And then also I'd encourage you to, you know, if people are reaching out, I've had people reach out to me on Instagram you know, we don't need them in our clinic. I do have normal masks that I would wear sometimes. Um, but the reality is, is that at this point, we are now seeing like Laredo, Texas, that city for any of you in Laredo, um, you guys have um, folks, uh, you actually have a city council that um, is going to, they're requiring you all to wear face masks. They're going to fine you a thousand dollars if you're walking around running uh, or you know exercising they've kind of been a little bit more lax but if you're walking your dog you're you know staying within six feet of each other and you're going to a grocery store you need to have a mask on if you're outside of your car outside of your home they said you need to wear a face mask we're going to see that wave hit we just seem to be slower you know this is where we were about three four weeks ago 
uh, and, and beyond when we were calling for staying at home before it was issued. So now's the time to order masks or start making them. Um, I, I, I want to put that out there. Um, Teresa said, is the silver good in the mask? I don't know, um, like silver thread or um, I don't know what that specifically means. Um, but I want you to consider this. Um, the other aspect here is that the mask is, is also to protect other people. Potentially, a lot of us may be asymptomatic we may in minimizing the, the, the extension. Um, so some other news, the United Kingdom is just like the US, they're having challenges. And I know we have a lot of folks from the UK who watch our, our live video. Um, they're having as much and honestly worse uh, testing challenges um, they are not testing enough. They've only tested 2,000 of their national healthcare service providers, which is terrible because they think more frontliners have have this. And um, I think it's very important that um, we just do everything to stay hunkered down, stay home, order things online, get things shipped to your home instead of um, instead of going over, you know, going going out. We really don't. If you don't need to. We, you know, stay, stay at home. Uh, Sue, Sue Chan, uh, Suchem, let's see, I just jumped on. Can you go over the mask mandate? There's no mask mandate right now, but the CDC is moving there. Um, and Laredo, Texas has uh, the council for the, the city of Laredo, Texas. They are, they've mandated it. Um, uh, we've seen some other areas, um, uh, the LA, uh, the entire city of LA, it's mandated. Basically, I saw an interview of um, Mayor Garcetti, LA, and I didn't really know that they call LA people who live in LA Angelinos. <laughs> so it's like all our Angelinos, we need to be wearing masks. And um, his comment was, if you're not, you're a killer. And that really, I, I, I know that's really bold. Uh, that really really sets in just the nature of, you know, it, we might be, we might be okay. We might have good health. We might not have underlying health conditions, but other people do. And as we're seeing in these categories of 19, you know, 20 to 44, there are a lot of people walking around with underlying health conditions that don't even know it. So I think that is something that we need to be cognizant of. Um, and Mo and Will says, I'm pregnant and have two children, one 11 and one four. I'm so afraid my husband is an essential employee, but feels he may have the virus. So his job took him off work today and told him he must go home. I'm hoping and quarantine him um, in this type of setting. I'm just going to deviate uh, a little bit because I really want to help Mo um, and Will, who's pregnant here in Georgia with two kids at home and a husband who's a frontliner. Um, and so what I would do is quarantine him, have him, if you have, you know, two levels, have him in one specific room um, with minimal uh, access to, a, you know, any, any other space um, and, and do not for any means don't um, uh, give him any of the like normal silverware or plates and cups they're recommending in quarantine settings to use paper plates and things that are disposable so that it minimizes the risk of the transfer. So um, I would definitely recommend full quarantine. And, and if he does have, have it uh, or thinks he does, have him wear a mask at home. That is the situation where a mask will protect the family. And we should have scenarios like in this type of case Somebody thinks they need to be in quarantine. And even when they get tested, they should go and how other countries did this. They had them go to a different location and would quarantine. They wouldn't see friends or family. Sometimes it was a you know offsite hospital or a hotel that was organized by the, the state or the country. And those individuals would quarantine and be there until it was safe for them to go home. We don't have that situation happening here. And it can be very, very challenging. So um and that that's really I'm out there um okay so florida has been a little wobbly with their mandate for everybody to shelter in place um the apparently the sneaky governor down there he signed an additional order that um uh overrode or overrides any of the uh county or any local state or local community um 
bodies in uh, minimizing people's gathering for religious affairs. So we had that conversation yesterday and got a little, a little heated with our friends in Texas, but this is a challenge uh, because we are coming up in a very um, heightened uh, religious time. You know, we have Good Friday and Easter coming up and other religious holidays that are all happening in a very short period of time. And it's very traditional for us to gather and get together. And, and this is a very dangerous time to do that. And so, um, you know, I just want to put that out there. It's, 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 it's negligent at this point. Um, okay. So Washington state extended their stay at home now to, uh, through all of April and to May 4th, Washington's really kind of hit their, their kind of peak, which is good. Um, but we're not seeing that, um, we're not seeing that with Michigan. We're not seeing that with, uh, Louisiana, Florida's on the uptake. Same with Massachusetts. Megan, look in the description box. Any of you on YouTube that want any of these links of the items that we're going to highlight, especially the mask, they're in the description box. So you can find those all below. Um, and so Sucha, Such a Ham, Such a Ham, the YouTube's the best place to grab all the links. Um, we just, I don't have that ability on Instagram. Um, Alma Furco is right now we are doing well, but my husband and boys are working and I'm worried. I totally understand. Um, okay. So, and that's the one thing, you know, for all of you watching possibly on the replay, this is a um, community that I'm hoping to create as we come together for usually about an hour and we connect and it's a way for also people to connect and not feel so isolated. So I really want to be, um, cognizant of the fact that a lot of you are by yourselves. And so I want you to know you're not alone. We're in this together and we will get through this together. And one of the mantras that I really push out quite a bit is that, you know, if you kind of recalibrate or start to feel yourself having anxiety, all you have to do is do a little deep breathing and say, all is well in my world. And that is, that's my Louise Hay mantra. It's a mantra that has gotten me through a lot. Um, and then just recalibrating kind of that, that mental talk because it can be very easy to get swept away in anxiety, panic, fear. Um, so definitely, um, want to encourage that. So for all of you at this point, please give me a thumbs up YouTube, please hit the share button. I'd love for us to post to, uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter and all the other, um, communities that could have access to our live show. Um, YouTube is very sensor, uh, pro censorship, anything around any viral topic. And I'm not going to say the words, but we get, um, demonetized. We get hell, our videos get held back and a lot are getting cut. Um, so there's totally deleting videos, which is, you know, we're trying to get you good information and they're hampering that process. So I want to kick off, um, uh, with some good news. Okay. So the good, good, good news is I don't know if you caught caught the good news uh, show. Um, uh, yeah, or some good news. So there's a show, a new YouTube channel by John Krasinski called Some Good News, SGN. So it's hashtag SGN. It's at Some Good News. And I'll include that here on, um, I actually tag him on YouTube. But it is... It is so worthy of watching. His first episode came out, I think it was Sunday. And um, I saw he filmed on Wednesday. I know they're probably editing yesterday. And I'm hoping a new episode comes out today or this weekend because he highlights some really great news, just of all sorts of happy stuff. Um, so I'm going to tag him here on the, the video. Um, yeah, so I'm tagging, um, let's see. I didn't really put this on here. I just figured out that I can do editing while I'm shooting. Huh, that's a new one. So, <laughs> um, so I'm just not technical friends, <laughs> so bear with me. Okay, so that is really, really exciting good news. Um, and that is just uplifting. He quickly, he's almost at a million subscribers, <laughs> literally in less than a week. And it was all done at home. It's really well done. Super funny. He interviewed, it was the 15 year anniversary of the office. He interviewed Steve uh, Carell. It's super funny. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I've had several of you email me that some friends have emailed me. 
I watch it a lot. It's really funny. So there's another episode. Yay. So that's great news. Then I want to share um, some other good news. All around the U.S., elementary school teachers have been doing teacher parades in neighborhoods. I think that's so fantastic. And if you're a teacher and you happen to be, you know, close to your communities, what a great way to encourage all these kids. And to that note, there was, um, it was on Goodable. It was on, um, it was on the Goodable uh, Twitter feed. But there was a math teacher, a picture of a math teacher helping a 12-year-old girl who was having trouble with her math homework. And he literally came to her house with a whiteboard and stood outside of her door and helped her through the math. I thought that was really great. And then here in Atlanta, I think it was over the weekend, um, the Atlanta Aquarium has been closed and they've done a few kind of interesting campaigns. They did a campaign with the Atlanta Humane Society where they let puppies, they release puppies into the aquarium. And it's really cute because they're like walking through all the areas that we go with Gabriel and then they fall asleep or they're looking at sharks and it's just cute, the inter interaction. Well, they also, I think about a week or so, two weeks ago, they released the penguins into the aquarium and you can watch the videos on online. But there's this really cute video that has gone viral of a penguin looking at the beluga whale. We have three beluga whales and the beluga is fascinated by the penguin. I showed it to Brian who's like, well, they eat penguins. I'm like, St Stop ruining my story, buddy. <laughs> So I don't know if that's true. I, I I don't I don't think belugas do, you know, killer whales for sure. But anyway, it's so darn adorable. And my favorite whale on the planet is the beluga. They seem like the nicest whales. Uh, but it's really, really cute. So if you need a little uplifting, cuteness, uh, puppies and whales, it's so fantastic. Um, so I'm just gonna put that out there. Okay, so let's dig into kids' health. So for many of you, just let me know. How many of you have kids that are watching or um, are, are hoping to really support and fortify your kids viral, uh, you know, minimize their viral, uh, not just exposure, but burden. And oh, by the way, I've put in um, children's masks and there's one vendor that's in the Etsy links that has for infants. And I know that's been really hard. Um, I've gotten lots of questions from uh, many of you saying, well, I, my, my baby, I, how do I protect my baby? And so there's one vendor that has small infant sized masks that um, you can order. And we're talking like newborn, you know, zero to three months, six months. Um, so do check out those links. I'm very, very excited to um, connect you with all of them. And they're all local vendors. They're all mom and pops doing their thing. Um, so let's kick off with um, let's kick off with children's health. Okay. So I'm seeing a lot of folks, uh, with kids and, um, teacher parades. Yeah. We love parades and teachers, whales, love it. <laughs> animals. We love animals. Don't they make us happy? Um, okay. So for kids, this is really all about boosting their immunity against virus and bacteria. So at the end of the day, minimizing sinus infections, ear infections, throat infections, um, also dealing with common cold and flu symptoms, you know, even some of the potentially allergies to runny nose, stuffiness, throat congestion, bronchial congestion. So I, I've covered a lot here in this range. I've, I want to start off with, and this is not necessarily the order I posted on YouTube, but I first want to start off with uh, vitamin D. Okay, so if you, and, and this is also for adults, but vitamin D is a crucial aspect for kids' immunity. If your children are not taking vitamin D3, they should. And it, I like for kids, especially like my, this is all going to be very much focused on like the four and a half range, although a lot of these go up to 12 and 14. And then at that point, like usually 14, 15, you can switch them to uh, the adult versions. And a lot of these brands have adult versions as well. But this is a dropper and it, it's got a little flavoring, um, but it's a liquid vitamin D3. And the dosing on this is 500 IUs for eight drops. And we've counted it out. Like they measure it by milliliters. So five drops works out to be you are sorry, a drops usually works out to be about 0.50 mls. And we give Gabriel some days, I'll give him a full dropper. Um, it is great for kids that also 
tend to have a weakened immunity. They might have difficulty concentrating. Vitamin D is not a vitamin. It is a, um, it's really a, a steroidal, it's a hormone. Um, and it is necessary in so many interactions within children's bodies. It's very supportive of enhancing their growth, their focus, their um, concentration. I love vitamin D. And a lot of times if they're not sleeping well, or even if they have a lot of like uh, growing pains, vitamin D can really minimize that. So vitamin D for sure. You want to make sure you've got vitamin D in both the children's uh, version for kids and then also adults. If you're not taking vitamin D, definitely consider it a, a very strong part of our immunity. It helps strengthen each of our cells and literally every cell, every, I mean, we have billions of cells in our body. Every cell has receptivity to vitamin D3. That's, that's not common. So every single cell. So you think you want to really support your children's body. Vitamin D3 is crucial. Okay, so that is really, really important. Love vitamin D. All right, and then next up, I wanna talk about some daily maintenance, okay? So Zarbies is what I highlighted the other day. I've got this link down below on YouTube. Zarbies has the nasal mist, and I love it. They've got a little vitamin C. So it's pro-supportive of just minimizing some of the inflammation in the sinuses, um, this is really great for kids like Gabriel. We've been playing outside. Like we even did a picnic outside. Uh, you know, the kids are having a tough time with the fact that schools, you know, they're not going to see their teachers or their friends until maybe August. So I was like, we're going to get outside the house. So we did. And of course, lots of pollen again, more pollen. So I do nasal spray in the morning. And then anytime when we come in from being outside. And most of the time we're outside at least three times throughout the day, we kind of have this little structure going on. So as soon as either myself or Brian come in, we will um, do a nasal spray. And you know, usually during the day, I'll just do one spray each nostril. And he knows like we, my child is in this root nice <laughs> schedule. He knows he's gonna have to do nasal spray. Sometimes I have to entice him. Uh, and usually it's through a vitamin gummy or um, we have um, herbal gummy or an herbal chocolate, you know, the three letter herbal I don't mention anymore. I have that as well, which is also really beneficial for kids. Um, so this is really important. We do this at night. And then I also have, for a lot of you guys see back here, I always have on, um, in his room, I always have going the uh, salt lamp. And so we do a salt lamp. I diffuse, so you can diffuse at night, immunity blends, you know, clove and tea tree oil and uh, frankincense. You can do blends, you know, breathing wise, because, you know, now we're dealing with a lot of allergies, you know, Guru Nanda, I love. Um, so those, those are things that are complementary to um, really helping fortify uh, the work that you're doing at home with your kids. And so, you know, a lot of times it's stuff that it's not even things you've got to kind of like hold them down for, encourage them. You know, I mean, kids aren't always on board, like, you know, adults, like we know sometimes we have to take stuff that doesn't taste great. You know, my child now is he's caught on. And so we have this routine. Um, but he also knows that things are going to make him feel better. And he also is very cognizant that if he consumes dairy, that it can it can hurt him, and so he is also very aware of cause um, you know cause and effect when it comes to food or outside like allergies, um, and that's always something I think that's important to highlight for kids is that um, it can it can greatly uh, enhance their compliance when they understand what these things do to make them feel better. So you know don't hesitate to really explain to them what vitamin D does and every cell in your body needs it and gives you energy. And, you know, there's really some easy ways to explain it for kids where, you know, Gabriel's all about getting taller, taller than mommy, taller than daddy. <laughs> He's so cute. comes up to like here on me. Um, but you know, that is helpful because he knows he takes all these different things that it's beneficial for him. Um, okay. So that, those are some things that I like the Himalayan pink salt, he does do this. It's pretty intense. Like I usually will only get one nostril, you know, and, and it's such a huge hit because it is pretty aromatic, 
but he will do this on occasion throughout the day. I just kind of pepper it in throughout the day. And then the one thing that I have added is Exlear. This is the xylitol nasal spray. Xylitol is a really good antibacterial. And for us, you know, you have him having come off of some fluid in his ears, I really want to kind of minimize that impact of us needing not to go to the doctor in the event he gets another ear infection. I think he's just growing. Like even the doctor, when we went to the dentist, he's got a lot, he's almost these like back molars are in. And that for a lot of kids around really like three and a half, four to six to seven, even the way their, their jaws are coming in and forming, it can press on and sometimes stop the flow of the eustachian tube. So this is a really common time when kids will come down with fluid in their ears. And so I'm all about minimizing that. Um, so that that's really, really important for us in our household. Um, okay, so those are those things. And let me share with you next up. Um, let me let me pull this one. So the um, there is one particular um, spray and it's um, it's an immune booster for um, adults and for kids. Um, I have it in a smaller version for him and he he won't take it, but he'll take it in a spray. And it's called um, kick it. So I'll just say it kick bud. So it's not bud. So kick, <laughs> kick bud immune. It's an activator. And let me share with you what's in this. So it has, um, it has Baptisia root. It has elderflower. It is herbasanta. It has yarrow. It has echinacea, white whole, uh, sorry, whole golden seal. Golden seal is awesome for a lot of respiratory sinus stuff. It has lavage root, cinnamon, and osha. Those are things you probably have never heard, even for like adults and their immunity. Um, but it's uh, very, very powerful at just fortifying and modulating their immune systems. It has the echinacea, which I love. And then it also has um, the Herba Santa. I love that too. And Golden Seal. So if kids kind of have uh, bronchial congestion, hey, Ray, Ray's on. Um, so if kids have bronchial congestion or they have any type of like cough, ear, nose, and throat stuff, this little spray, just like two or three sprays in their mouth, you know, obviously followed by something really pleasant to wash it down. It, it's very powerful. Um, for adults, they usually do seven pumps. For kids, you know, one to three is usually what I say. But again, at like that 14, 15, 16 range, that's where uh, teens can move on to adult uh, doses. And I get that question a lot from a lot of parents, like at what point do I move my child who is, you know, at late tweens or early teens, move them on to something um, that's more adult. And so just kind of gauge also, you know, the height, the weight uh, of your child. Some kids grow faster, others are a little delayed. So that's another factor as well to consider. Um, so let me see if there are any questions here. Um, Donna, all the links are, are down below. This, the kick butt one, let me see. I don't think I've got that. Um, let's see. Oh, I do. Here, let me put it in there. Um, and they, they have a whole assortment. It's a really good line. We've been using the, the dropper line, but he decided that he was over the dropper. <laughs> uh, so sometimes you got to go um, with it. All right. So I'm putting that link in. Okay. So the link's there now, you guys. Um, okay. So that, that is great. And this is, this is something, some of the products I have float in transition between adults and kids. So a lot of times if I'm taking something, he can also take the same thing, just a different dosage, like cold calm. So this is great for adults too. Cold calm, I don't know if you're familiar with this. This is a Boron. Um, they're one of the homeopathic brands that I adore. There are several of them. Highlands is a big one I love for adults and kids. But this particular one, um, they are little white tabs that are very, very easily dissolved for kids. Um, they do have pastels that are kids oriented, but we, he didn't do well with it. And I don't feel like he really, he just swallowed them. Um, and they're hard to chew. This dissolves. So he just holds it in his tongue and he actively asks for these. Like anytime he starts to feel anything, 
he's like, I need my tabs, my, my immune tabs. And so the cold calm is what we take as adults and we give, um, it's okay for kids as well, three and older. So they have kind of a different dose, like, um, you know, two tabs under the tongue. Sometimes I'll just do one if it's milder, but this cold calm is my favorite. Like it has, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. It has about 11 homeopathics. And it'll relieve cough, congestion, nasal issues, um, sneezing. Um, and this is what is really important. This particular product, I should do, let me write this down. I should do a separate video. Because remember we talked about the two um, weird symptoms. So there's a homeopathic that addresses that. And it's called pulsatia. It has pulsatia and it can address the loss of taste and smell. So note to self, I might have to shoot that video today. I was really good yesterday. I shot a lot of video. Now I have to do a whole bunch of editing. Um, so yeah, so kids, really, really key. Um, do, do, do. Um, okay, so that, I love that, high, the cold calm. They also have a sinus calm. The sinus calm is for six and older. So we don't give that. They've got a throat calm. So the um, calm line, cold sinus, they have an allergy calm. They have a lot of different ones, but the cold calm is like my normal go-to. I love that. Okay. So now um, I also want to address when, <clears throat> and this again could be for the current virus, if children get it, <clears throat> could be for allergies because <clears throat> some of those symptoms that we talked about uh, over here, some of these symptoms can be very much intertwined. It's hard to tell, like, does my child have the virus or, you know, is it just a regular cold? So there are some homeopathics. I'm going to share the homeopathics. And then I do think, especially now, given the state of the virus, I think we also need to have what I consider a normal conventional over-the-counter uh, medication and just have it on hand. You know, do I always recommend using that? Not always. Sometimes you need to. And in this case, we need to limit us having to go into a hospital setting because the hospitals are not the places where you want to be. At this point, they are petri dishes of viral activity that we're trying to minimize. So my hope and you guys watching this video, us going through some of these resources that you will equip yourselves and your kids to avoid having to go to the doctor, because that's the other thing. There are a lot of people who have the virus that are going to the doctor's offices. You don't wanna be in those places. <laughs> you wanna be home away from any exposure. Okay, so another brand I love, this is my open bottle, it's kind of, it's kind of a disaster, but this is what the box looks like. It's uh, Similesson, I think is how you say it but it's a kid's cold and mucus relief. So, and it also has echinacea. Um, this, this one is really great. I couple up cold calm in this. And sometimes depending on, like I always look at the back and I wanna see, okay, what homeopathics are in it? A lot of times they will be different types of homeopathics. So sometimes I'll have him take this, then you know, half hour later, hour later, I'll have him take this dose. But I'm always using homeopathy in his regimen. And I just kind of slowly integrate it through the course of the day. And that's where, like with homeopathics, a little bit goes a long way, but you do a little bit frequently or more often to address the symptoms. So the dosing is a lot different and the kind of methodology of how we consume homeopathy is different than like your normal kind of take this every four or six hours. It, it's not always like that. Um, but this is one that's always, again, you know, this, this is a, this is the daytime. This is the nighttime. They have two versions. Um, so kindness on YouTube, I've got all these links, but if you want specific, uh, links, DM me and I'll send them to you for, for Instagram, it's hard for to link, but YouTube, all these links are down below. Um, so this is really, I love this one. Um, and I love it that it's got that whole immune support. It also has mountain flax and zinc. So zinc's another one of those um, nutrients, one of these minerals that is very supportive of an immune response. And through this and some of your other kind of traditional multivitamins, um, you can enhance the zinc without overdoing it. Because kids, it, we don't want to do too much zinc with kids, um, but it is helpful. Okay, now the other one that I really enjoy uh, um, is, and I just brought the cold 
the nighttime one. But there's there are two versions of Highlands for kids that we adore. There's a cold and cough and a cold and mucus. And the cold, both of them, cold and cough and cold and mucus, they have AM and PM versions. So the AM is a yellow and the PM is blue. Super easy. <laughs> the labeling is like, duh. Moms and dads can pick up on which bottle to take. <laughs> and they sometimes still ask, like, which one's the big time? Go with blue. So uh, the Highlands, they're another homeopathic line that we, it's a staple. Like it generally we don't need to go to a doctor unless, you know, he's complaining of ear pain, but you know, I, I really treat everything at home as much as I can, but the Highlands, the cold and um, cold and cough and cold and mucus is really great. So depending on the symptoms that your child's experiencing, you could have one or the other. Um, and the PM just also aids in helping them sleep a lot better. So it just kind of calms their body, helps them get restful sleep. Um, and it is something that um, we, we really find that Gabriel responds quite well to it. I thought I brought, um, I guess I left it over in the cabinet. The Highlands also has a baby version. So for a lot of you with babies, um, they have, they have a baby version. So, I mean, we we're talking like since Gabriel was probably two, three months old, I've been, he's been introduced and in consuming uh, Highlands products. Um, and it really, it really helped minimize our need to go in. Come here, Pat. Here's my Daisy. Come here. You want to say hi to everybody? I don't know if you guys, you can, you can't see her. Come here. Come here. Um, so sorry, sometimes we have dogs say hello and interrupt. Um, so Highlands is definitely a great product, great brand for kids. They also do have products for adults. Um, but as far as the kids line, that's like my frontline, uh, resource. Okay. Pup. Um, so I love that. Um, it's really, really powerful. Okay. So let me just make sure I added Highlands. Let me add the Highlands for kids cold and mucus. Okay. So YouTube, I'm adding that. Uh, and they have it the day and night. We just buy both. Um, it's actually cheaper that way, but also, you know, if they, if your kids are experiencing symptoms during the day, honestly, sometimes it can get worse at night. And so it's definitely a reason to have the PM. Um, and then the nighttime, it does have, um, it has chamomilla and it has coffea cruda, which help with it. So these are specific home, homeopathics that help with sleep, sleeplessness or restless. Like when they get irritable and fussy or they've got a little bit of a mild fever and they're not sleeping well, this helps them uh, get through that. Now, also, um, I want to talk about cough syrups. So one of the things that you know, can happen when kids have immune challenges, they, um, you know, they will also have drainage, and then they get the cough. So depending on, you know, how intense the mucus is, or what type of virus or bacteria they've been exposed to, and where it's targeting, sometimes coughing is part of a part of the factor. So I, I love to also add in things that are going to address the, the, the cough mucus, like the bronchial type of congestion, because a lot of times for kids, when it gets into the Bronx, it can move pretty quickly into a bronchial lower respiratory infection. And then obviously, you know, I, I mentioned on Sunday, like when I was little, my, my younger sister had pneumonia and it, it was, it was a viral pneumonia, um, you know, not unsimilar to the viral pneumonias that are hitting our our world in the hospital systems. And it, it was, it was comprehensive and it came on really fast. Um, and coughing, mucus, a lot of that kind of gets kids to that phase. So I want to share with you two, two different brands that we love, um, mommy bliss. And this is something that's very easy to get I've posted, you know, the Amazon links down below, but this is fantastic. They have, it's organic and they also have, um, Slippery Elm, it has honey, elderberry, and wild cherry bark. These are really great herbals. So they have botanicals in it that actually help mucus, kind of is an expectorant. They also have ginger, so it's an anti-inflammatory. So this is also something that we add in 
Um, I thought when he turned like two, we kind of leveled out of a lot of the mommy bliss products. Like they've got a gripe water that's great for kids. I have like oil and gas and stuff. But the mommy bliss continues on with this particular organic kids cough syrup. Um, and it's it's fantastic. They also have a little zinc and they have some vitamin C in it. Um, but the slippery elm is awesome. And that is a very good kind of expectorant and it's very pro respiratory support. So this is, this is a big winner in our book. Another one that actually for kids and adults is, uh, nature's yeah. Nature's way. I I've loved this brand forever, but they have their bronchial soothe. And this is something that has, um, English Ivy extract. So for coughing, one of my favorite botanicals, and I, I find this is for adults and kids. One of my favorites is, um, it is actually uh, the English Ivy and that will actually help push mucus up. So it'll get a good, like if you've got that cough that keeps coming and you're like, gosh, I just want a good cough to get it out. English Ivy can be really great. And when you take it, it'll, it'll coat the throat. So a lot of times that soreness in the throat, <coughs> it can be really, really good. So I love that. Sorry, the girls are making noise inside. Okay, so that that's one of my favorite ones. Um, and it's called Bronchial Soothe. Okay. And then, you know, at the end of the day, like, it, you know, don't, don't feel bad if you're going to go over the counter, because I always, I always want to be prepared, especially now more than ever, you want to have these items, even if you don't need them, you might need them. And so, you know, moms, we're pre planners, we carry purses with like endless supply of everything you need, you pull stuff out of your purse that you're like, Oh, I might need this. So consider doing the same for your medicine cabinets for your kids and yourselves. But Mucinex cold kids, this is, um, this is so for this is and then this is the other thing Mucinex can be used at age four. And so we've just now started to introduce this to Gabriel. We use it when the norovirus hit and they had the kind of congestion too. This um, is a liquid. They also have something called um, <clears throat> melts. And they're literally, it's this little orange box. And I actually, th I love this better. And um, the melt actually has the ability, like it's just like little particles that they open up their mouth and you kind of pour it in. It's like a little kind of dissolvable stuff. Delivery wise, it was the faster, it's a faster and easier delivery delivery method. He's not always on board with taking these flavored syrups. He doesn't like it, partially because Highlands tends not to be colored or flavored or anything like that. And that's what he's used to. And we do all these tabs and things. But that was something that he would take. And it is an expectorant. So it is very, very powerful at helping to get um, out congestion and, and reduce that burden on his body. Um, so, you know, Mucinex right now um, is something that I, I, I honestly, I, I didn't look on Amazon, but I know, and I've even seen people um, have calls, uh, you know, ALS patients. And you guys know I'm in the ALS network because of some patients that I worked with. Come here, Daisy. Um, the... ALS patients often use Mucinex because of the breathing tubes and some of the breathing apparatus that they have. So I know that just lo locally from some of these families that the adult version is a little delayed, like there's a two week delivery delay. But with kids, I think it might be a little different. So check that just want to put that out there. Um, and that really that's kind of the clearinghouse of things that we put Gabriel on to Partly prevention, he's not on all these all the time, but if he starts to get nasal, he gets, starts to get symptoms of cold or the flu or any type of viral infection, this is what we do as parents and what we put him on. Um, so Vicki, which one can parents, uh, can infants have? So um, Highlands and Boron all have infant products. So there are liquids, there's a liquid version of the cold calm, for kids, um, even Similison has an it, like an infant version. Sometimes they're just like little drops that you put in the uh, you know in the child's uh, mouth, or even in a bottle if they're you know bottle fed, or would take a bottle. Um, yeah, so Daisy came to say hi. 
She's such a pretty girl. She's a naughty little girl. She keeps jumping the fence. We have to get the defense guy out and we don't want him to come into the house. So we have to figure that out some way for her, him to, they have to fix her collar. Apparently the collar is not turned up. The fence line is, but her collar. So when she wants to go see the kids bouncing on a trampoline, she's getting a little hit and she's like, ah, it's so worth it. And just jumps over the fence, literally like a deer, just scales it. Four and a half foot fence, just clears it. Ah, oh, she's so crazy. So Donna says, I'm homebound. Yuck, I totally know. Um, okay, so, all right, we've got some questions. Monica, sorry if this is a silly question, but is it okay to run your AC unit in your house? I'm scared because of the virus. Okay, so that's an excellent question. And I actually have a video, uh, not a live, but a video I'm going to put out next week sometime that's going to highlight air filtration systems. There are UV filtration systems that can kill viral and bacterial pathogens and clear your air so that in the event that you're concerned about your AC circulating that, a plug-in unit in a room would be a good option. And that actually would be something, if somebody were in quarantine, that is an essential item. You need some sort of hospital grade disinfectant filtration system beyond just a HEPA filter. Like we have a really nice AC unit Two, we have two levels. So we have two units, um, came with the house, it's, yeah, high quality. It still doesn't cut it. We have three dogs, three humans. And by the way, for all of us staying at home, anybody else feel like your house is dirtier than normal? I'm running my little iRobot every morning and every afternoon and it's insane. I'm like, where's all this dirt and stuff coming from? It's crazy. Um, so yeah, it is, uh, it's definitely something I would consider to be a part of um, a quarantine protocol. Here she comes again. Come here, Daisy. Oh, she got her toy. Um, I, I was cleaning, we were cleaning all sorts of closets and we found new toys and you know, it's like new toys, just like with us, like when you rotate a closet or you find stuff, you're like, Oh, I haven't seen it in a while. That's what they're feeling like. Um, okay. So are these safe for kiddos with JRA? Um, yes, yes. Um, the only thing that I would be cognizant of would be the echinacea potentially like in the, uh, similison. But for sure, like the, the ginger uh, would be really good as an anti-inflammatory. But to that note, I always say, talk with, you know, ask your pediatrician's office, you know, call the nurse practitioner and ask your pharmacist. Because a lot of times kids with uh, juvenile uh, arthritis or any of the kind of arthritic conditions, they're on medication. So I always want to put that out there. That's my medical disclaimer. Um, okay, so... Those, those are my tips for today. Um, I really, I do want to encourage you all, if you haven't seen some good news, the YouTube channel that John um, has put out, the guy from the office and who was in that one awesome show on Netflix, Jack, uh, what was the name of that show? I don't know. We jonesed out on it. I usually don't like that, those types of shows. And I really loved it. I can't remember. Tell me the name of that show. <laughs> Oh, Brian pulls me into all sorts of um, Netflix uh, shows. And um, also, by the way, Brian went to bed and I finished the last uh, last show of the Ozark season, the final, you know, the last season that's out. Holy cow. I yelled out loud. Oh, my gosh. And woke him up <laughs> from upstairs. I mean, it was a shocking ending. So if you guys haven't Netflixed, binge watch Ozarks, it's Awesome. I love that. So that's a little sideline. Um, okay. So Alyssa says, if these remedies are new for your child, how much should you space out a new remedy before adding another one? So with homeopathy, it, you know, I treat it a lot differently than um, herbals. And so it, it, it homeopathics either work or they don't. There's no in between. And um, with homeopathy, you are safe in terms of using with all sorts of other it over the counters and, and generally the ones that we have, they don't have any of the, um, kind of warning homeopathics. Those have all been pulled, you know, like that used to have those teething tabs we loved, but with the belladonna and some of the other things they were very nervous about with children. Um, and somebody mentioned rescue remedy. Look, I always have it on. Ah. 
So I call it my Teflon. Here she comes. Come here, Daisy. Here, you want to come up here? She's a lap puppy. Here, come here. Say hi to everybody. Come here. Come here. Here. Okay. Let's see. Can you guys see her? Let's see. There she is. Oh, she's a good girl. That's my puppy dog. So this is Gabriel's puppy. She is part. Um, we rescued her. She was, uh, I was supposed to look at cats for my senior cat, Wellington, because he was lonely when his, his uh, sister kitty passed away. And Gabriel and I went to the puppy zone in the Humane Society. They had like all these little puppies. And we saw her and totally fell in love. She is part, um, her DNA came back. She's part 20% Stratfordshire Terrier. And then she's part Border Collie. So she's got the little kind of border markings. Are you a pretty girl? Say hi to everybody. Want to say hi? Yes, I know. And she's very posy, like a border collie. Super smart. Um, very affectionate. Totally loving. And we love the Humane Society. So all of my dogs, all three of them are rescues. My kitties were all rescues. And um, Gabriel announced he wants to get a hamster because of ABC Mouse. He wants a real one. Oops. There you go. Um, so I'm trying to get Brian to add a cat. <laughs> Gabriel, I don't know if you guys can see this. So Gabriel was playing with his puppy dog. He's got like this little puppy. See that? He's so over there and he had, he put three leashes on the little puppy dog. It's over there in the corner. Oh, here's my flat coat. So you guys are getting, I opened the doors. So they have all come in. Come here, Mina. You want to say hi, Mina? So Mina is beautiful. Mina is a flat, move Daisy. Come here, Mina. Come here. Mina is my flat coat of retriever. She looked like a um, Newfoundland puppy. She was a big black teddy bear. And she's a little shy. She's a little camera shy. I'm not her human. Brian is her human. I rescue them all. And then Brian converts them. Come here. Oh, so anyway, so these are these are our stress relievers. Yeah, Daisy is a good girl. You want to say hi, Mina? So Mina, Mina is a beautiful, beautiful puppy dog. But Daisy loves all the attention. Daisy sits on her lap. And the pup, don't, don't paw. So she's a sweet girl. So yeah, so you get to see all our, <laughs> all our pups. And my white puppy is uh, the lazy one, Mizuki. So she generally sleeps all day, snores. She's got quite the life. And uh, Daisy and Mina are really active puppies. Oh, so good. Oh, some puppies. Yes, they love puppies. All right. So let's see. What are the questions you guys have? Uh, Whitney Morgan said, you should check out the pranks John and Emily play on Jimmy Kill. Oh, my gosh. I'll have to check it out. Um, oh, Tracy had a pit name, Daisy. Daisy, your beauty. Oh, she likes that. Um, yeah, we love doggy visitors. Yeah, we are, we're converts. I may foster fail as well. <laughs> I want to foster more, but Brian knows, like, he's also a big sucker. So if I brought an animal into the house, he just can't say no. And we actually end up saving animals. Somehow turtles get on our yard uh, and the dogs, little baby birds. So sometimes we have to save them from the crazies out back. Um, but yeah, so let's see, adjust the camera a little bit. Okay, there we go. Can you see her? Isn't she pretty? She's a pretty girl. Yeah, so she's she's the crazy girl. And Mina, Mina's the sweetheart. So, um, but yeah, so our, our dogs are super sweet. Uh, yeah, I'm a dog lady. I'm technically I'm a cat lady, but the, the, they've converted, they've converted me. I didn't grow up with any animals. So my parents weren't into animals being in the house and and I have a total softy heart. So I'm totally making up for years of not having animals. Uh, Dika says, can you talk about a vitamin, a women's vitamin they take every day? So with, you know, it's, it's hard to say with vitamins, like there's so many that are out there. And I just don't think vitamin, a single vitamin kind of solves everything that you need. So, um, you know, I, I tend to have a lot of different things that I recommend. Um, and honestly, I like some of the powders that you can add into drinks and stuff. Are you a pretty girl? You want to say hi to everybody? Look, right there. No, nope, she just wants some love. Um, okay, so we have a question. A uh, rumor about elderberry and Tylenol affecting, affecting the virus. Have you heard anything? So there are um, like Advil, the ibuprofen, there's been conversations with it. I don't, I haven't seen any clinical data per se. 
I know it's, it's something, it'd be something that, um, you know, if what we'd, uh, no, don't go down there. Um, oops. Oh, we lost Instagram. I forgot. Let me say the story. Okay. Let me go. Let me pull Instagram back up. Actually, you know what? I'll just, I'll just let Instagram go. Cause we're just chatting. Um, so I haven't seen anything specifically that, um, I have seen doctors. I've seen people. What are you doing? Come out from underneath there. There's nothing good down there. All sorts of wires. Um, I've seen some, some communication about it, but I would like to see more. I'd love to see out of all the cases that end up in ventilation or on ventilators or in ICU, you know how they always ask like, what medications are you on? Like, was that part of the treatment? And, you know, also I think it's one of these things where so these hospital systems, they're just in emergency mode. And so the research is lagging because the resources in the hospital setting, we just don't have all hands on deck to pull all that, all that data. Um, so uh, let's see. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Um, so that, that is, that is something that, um, that I definitely think is, is, I don't know. So I think the jury's out. I know there, there was, it was a big deal a while ago. Um, let's see. Donna says, my husband says, when I can walk without Walker, I can get a dog. Oh, well, that's great motivation. Um, but you know what? Tell them that dogs are good therapy dogs and that, and that might actually help you too. I have all sorts of great excuses that I've, I've used it on Brian. So he did say that, you know, we were supposed to do this. I was supposed to do Germany this summer. And that's just, that's looking like that's, <laughs> that's not, that's a fail too. Um, and then they were going to join me for several weeks, um, traveling through all sorts of European countries. So the plan was when we get back, um, he was like, I'd be open to considering having, a, getting a cat. Uh, and so I've always wanted a green and white cat with, or a gray and white cat with green eyes. Um, so we'll see, but you know, if we go, I'm going to do Germany, obviously if it's not this summer, I'm going to do it next summer for the class program that I have at the, um, it's all kind of ed post education, like post certification program, um, with a hospital, um, like it's like a fellowship type of program. Um, okay. Joanna, Joanne, can you mention the names of the powders that you're speaking of? I don't remember what powders, but I honestly, a lot of like protein powders and, you know, herbal powders and blends like that. Um, I've heard under one year old. No. Okay. Yeah. Donna. Yes. I'll talk to your husband. <laughs> he won't be able to say no. Um, okay. So friends, thank you for joining me today. Um, happy Friday. I hope you guys have a wonderful, happy day. Stay well and do, if you haven't checked it out, go watch some good news. Hilarious. And I'm going to be, I, I'm subscribed. I hit all the notifications. I can't wait to see the new video that he puts out. It was so great. It was so funny. Super inspiring. And um, yeah, so get outside. Uh, hopefully it's sunny and beautiful where you're at. And we are going to put in a Home Depot home delivery order today. So I'm going to kick off our gardening. We started planting uh, seeds. And so I'm going to do some, some turning over of my garden and start to get that all prepped. So we're going to be doing a lot of yard work this weekend. And I'm going to try and minimize my sun exposure on my face. So I did all that stuff pre-wedding. <laughs> now I'm going to have to do it over again if I don't protect my face from the sun. Um, so anyway, thanks, everybody. This is always fun. And we will... I'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, my members, for all you members who are on, uh, we're going to schedule our member Q&A, the live private uh, YouTube member uh, program. So Dale, who's on, and uh, let's see, we have a few others. Uh, Diet DP Gal, um, that will be at 3.30 tomorrow. So I'll take a break, and I will see you uh, for that live chat in addition to our 9 a.m. Uh, program. So anyway, oh, it's raining in Dublin. Well, hopefully the rain's good for the virus. I would imagine that kind of helps minimize its spread. Um, okay. So yeah, Joanne, work on your husband. <laughs> and uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Stay well, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.